breaking news right now. A deadly crash that has closed Creedmoor Road in northern Raleigh. We have a team headed to that scene right now trying to get breaking developments in this story. And it's a comfortable start to the day. Upper 60s, low 70s across the area right now. I'll show you how high the temperature goes for today coming up. And police are investigating a shooting in a Raleigh neighborhood. We'll tell you what investigators are trying to determine as two men recover in the hospital. And we are live at Pinehurst number two, where some of the world's greatest golfers are back at it again with practice rounds now underway. We have a look at what fans can expect today. It is so lively there yeah. at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. It's so everybody's great to see up. that. I know everybody's up hitting the links today. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on Fox 50 for WREL News. I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Happy Tuesday. We got to get right over to meteorologist Amy Wilmoth. Another beautiful day out there with low humidity, Amy. It's what we like to hear. It's a nice treat during the month of June and a nice treat if you're headed to the deep app this evening. The Bulls are playing at home at 635 this evening. It'll be beautiful for the game. It's gorgeous with the sun shining on the deep app. Right now, it's 69 right now in Durham for the game. Temperatures will be in the low 80s, 68 degrees. The current temperature in Rocky Mount, it's 70 in Fayetteville. If you want to head to the pool today, I know it's also a swim meet Tuesday. The weather looks quiet. We don't have any rain or storms in the forecast. We'll have mostly sunny skies for the first part of the day, and then a few clouds arrive during the afternoon. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds with temperatures near normal, 85 for the high. But as Michelle mentioned, the dew point will be low, the humidity low, so it's just a nice feel to Today. Tomorrow's not bad. Temperatures creep up a little bit. Humidity creeps up a little bit, but it's still pretty comfortable for the month of June and still pretty close to normal. But by the time Thursday gets here, the humidity returns and the heat returns. 92 for the high, and that's the start of the U.S. Open down in Pinehurst. Some bigger heat works in for the tournament by the end of the week. I'll show you that coming up in a little bit, Ken. 802, Amy, we continue to follow that breaking news right now. This is a live look uh, at Creedmoor Road at Norwood Road uh, this morning. It's north... Uh, uh, of Raleigh. Uh, this road is completely shut down this morning as a result of that two vehicle crash that happened a couple of hours ago, actually. Uh, a couple of co vehicles collided, uh, rolled over. Uh, one driver died in that crash. Another driver was taken to the hospital. You can see uh, law enforcement and first responders there uh, in that um, in the side of the road trying to figure out exactly what's going on. I know one of the vehicles overturned in that ditch as well. We'll continue to monitor this roadway and let you know when it reopens, but it doesn't look like it's going to be open for a while yet. Uh, this is what it looks like on our sensors this morning. Uh, in terms of what Creedmoor Road looks like. Uh, Norwood Road uh, completely shut down this morning. Uh, so you might want to take uh, US-1 Capitol Boulevard as an alternate route as a result of, to avoid that area. Also around the triangle, the crashes that you see right here, mainly on the local roads. There's one, though, on uh, Capitol Boulevard near on the east westbound lanes of the Beltline. So keep that in mind. You might want to give yourself some extra time for the Beltline as part of your morning commute. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ken. WREL is staying on to a developing story. Two men injured in a shooting. WREL's Kelsey Coffey was at the scene on Charleston Park Drive with more on the investigation. Officers were here investigating for more than five hours, and when they were here in the neighborhood, it seemed like they were focusing their investigation on this house here behind me. But let's take you to video now from the WREL breaking news tracker. You can see officers there outside of that home investigating. The shooting happened on Charleston Park Drive around midnight. The two men who were shot were taken to the hospital. We're working to get an update on their condition. Police are still searching for the shooter. We'll be sure to stay on top of this and keep you updated. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News in Raleigh. And developing this morning in Durham, a woman was shot around 1.30 a.m. This happened on Fayetteville Street near East Umstead Street. Officers found a woman who was shot in an empty lot. Police say that her injuries are not life-threatening, though. We are working to find out if any arrests have been made. And just blocks from where that shooting happened, a three-year-old was seriously hurt after a drive-by shooting yesterday. This happened at a Walgreens on Fayetteville Street just before 5 o'clock last night. Police say someone drove through the parking lot and shot into a car where a man was sitting along with a three-year-old boy. Both of them were hit. The man is expected to be okay. The boy was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. People that we spoke with say the regularity of shootings like this has them living in fear. City is in dying need. I left Philadelphia for this. And I, I, I come to a state where it's the same thing. So, I mean, it's, it, it, I can't keep jumping states. 
Police have not made an arrest yet. In a statement, Mayor Leonardo Williams said, as mayor of one of the coolest cities in America, best places to live, best business establishment, etc. None of that matters until we make the safety of our communities, especially our children, the number one priority in this city. Practice rounds for the U.S. Open will continue this morning at Pinehurst number two. And WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from Pinehurst. We have seen so many different people gathering at the golf course this morning, Laura. It's an exciting time down there for Pinehurst. Hey, Chris, and we are waving at everyone who's walking by, waving at us. It is getting busy here at Pinehurst number two as fans have come out to see some of their favorite golfers up close and personal. We just saw Tiger Woods here behind me at the first hole. He has now moved to the second. So if you see some big crowds moving to and from an area, that's because everyone is looking to scout out their favorite golfer, right? Take a look at some of this video, though, of Tiger Woods this morning. Next to him is his son, Charlie Woods, who has been with him since day one out here really kind of just helping him through these practice rounds. The 15-time major champion hasn't won a major event since his triumph at the 2019 Masters. He played a more limited schedule since suffering a career-threatening leg injury in a car crash in 2021. We also saw Raleigh native Webb Simpson yesterday get some practice rounds in. Simpson ranked 220th in the world, and he's had a more difficult path to reach the Open. He had to qualify just last week at Duke University Golf Club to get here. It's a long day, especially for someone who understands how sweet it is to be in a major, especially US Open here at Pinehurst. It was like there was that pressure on me, but I think it was good and bad. It, it allowed me to really take the qualifier serious, do my prep work beforehand, and don't take it for granted. Yes, yeah, so we are expected to hear from and see a lot of uh, big other names here as well. Tiger Woods will be speaking in a press conference at 10 a.m., but we're also going to hear from Scotty Scheffler as well. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Pinehurst. Thank you, Laura. And WRL is your home for the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. Our team will have complete coverage leading up to and during the tournament on your phone, on your tablet, on your TV. And the first round tees off on Thursday. Today, House lawmakers are expected to vote on a bill that would make it illegal to wear a mask in public except for health reasons. It's happening today at the legislative building in Raleigh where you're looking live. State lawmakers came to a compromise on the legislation last week. Wearing a medical or surgical grade mask to prevent the spread of disease is OK. Making masking for protesting is not. The Senate passed the bill last week. The House is expected to pass it today. And the bill also includes a proposal that could affect this year's elections. Republican lawmakers have tacked a loosening of campaign finance laws for corporations to the bill. Corporations are currently allowed to fund independent groups that can make ads supporting candidates. But corporations are not allowed to directly fund politicians. Critics say this new bill would allow that. And this morning, groups that oppose the measure are scheduled to gather outside the state house. Six days of excitement at the soccer tournament at Wake Med Soccer Park. They are over. The North Carolina Courage fell just short in the finals of the women's TST last night. Now, despite that, the team's fans are buzzing about the memorable tournament and the historic final. The U.S. women's national team won the $1 million grand prize with a 6-3 win over the Courage last night. It was the first women's TST running alongside the men's tournament. Fans say that even though the Courage came up just short, the tournament is still a big win for women's sports in general. That women's soccer is elite and amazing and people want to come watch it. So come out and support the courage, you know, here every week. A team from Delaware won the men's tournament and it's one million dollar prize. For the first time, Celine Dion is opening up about her rare neurological disorder. You'll hear how she says she's coping with the illness and if she'll make a return to the stage. Plus, it's not your typical science lab. How a Nash County hemp facility is working to set a standard for manufacturing hemp products across the state. And you're looking live at Pinehurst, the resort and country club. The U.S. Open gets underway on Thursday. Practice rounds again today. I'll show you the rain chances and the big heat headed this way just in time for the tournament coming up.
Good morning to our friends in Fenton and Cary on this beautiful Tuesday you're waking up to. A little cloud coverage, not too, too much. Ultimately, today's shaping up to be a good one, not just there, but also in Pinehurst where the U.S. Open is unfolding today. We've got Amy Wilmoth giving you a look at your uh, forecast for the week. Yeah, if only we could keep this weather for the entire tournament. The practice rounds, they have great weather. The weather will be nice tomorrow, but then it's hot and humid starting on Thursday when the tournament gets underway. But it's beautiful out there this morning. It's 68 right now in Southern Pines with a dew point in the upper 50s. So it feels very comfortable with the low humidity. It's a little bit muggy here in Clinton. The dew point's higher in the upper 60s, but some dry air for most of us today. Hour by hour, it's going to be a very nice day with low humidity through the day and temperatures near normal. Our high gets up to 85 and the normal high this year is 86. So we're just shy of normal, but we do have a ridge of high pressure that's going to build in and that's going to bring us some really hot temperatures by the end of the week and that will continue through the weekend as well. Highs will be back in the 90s. 86 is the normal. We'll hit 85 today, 87 tomorrow, so still not bad tomorrow, but then at 92 Thursday when the U.S. Open in Pinehurst gets started, 94 Friday and that will be the hottest day so far this year and 93 for the high temperature on Saturday. So some big heat is headed our way. Appreciate today and tomorrow. Try to get outside if you can. We do have a frontal system off the coast of North Carolina and we might see a tropical depression develop. I'll talk more about that potential coming up in the next half hour with a tropical update, but we could see some showers and storms along part of the North Carolina coast and maybe a stray shower in eastern North Carolina today, but I don't think that most of us are going to see anything. We'll have mostly sunny to part cloudy skies 5 p.m. Eastern counties, maybe a sprinkle or two. It's not going to add up to much in the rain gauge, but I just don't want it to catch you off guard in case you do run into one of those quick showers that could make their way into our eastern counties along I-95. But it'll be dry Thursday and Friday for um, the start of the tournament and likely dry Saturday and Sunday. Our rain chance is only a 20% for Saturday and Sunday, so it's going to be hot and dry for the tournament in Pinehurst. This is a look at the percent of normal for rainfall over the past 30 days and the take home message here is anywhere where you see the oranges that's where we have below normal rainfall and we really don't have any good rain chances in the next seven days so we could start to see our drought worsen across North Carolina. Nice weather today and tomorrow, and then the heat's back. 92 on Thursday. We'll stay in the 90s through the weekend and actually into early next week as well. Ken? We continue to follow that breaking news uh, on Creedmoor Road just north of Raleigh. This Creedmoor Road between uh, Norwood Road and Churchill. Um, uh, there's another road that escapes me right now, but I'll get it for you in about 10 minutes. But this is a Norwood Road for sure, and this road is completely shut down. Uh, it for the last hour, certainly will remain that way because of two vehicles that collided. What, a couple of them overturned. One person died. Another person was taken to the hospital. You can see first responders remained there on the scene. This road will remain closed for quite some time, we were told. So definitely try to avoid this road by using US-1 Capitol Boulevard as an alternate north-south route. This is what it looks like on the sensor this morning. Really and truly, they completely shut down between Norwood Road and Tickets Pond Drive. That's the road I was looking for in terms of letting you know exactly where this road is shut down, but definitely try to avoid that area altogether if you possibly can. Also around the triangle, uh, it, things are really beginning to thin out really right now along the belt line. We're just seeing some brake tapping going on on the south side of the Beltline as well as the north side of the Beltline as well. I-540, uh, that's another troubled spot this morning, so keep that in mind if you're about to head out. Thanks, Ken. Authorities in Arizona have released Rudy Giuliani's mugshot. Giuliani posted a $10,000 bail after being booked yesterday in Phoenix. He was indicted there in connection with Arizona's fake electors case. Giuliani pleaded not guilty to nine felony charges related to the 2020 election interference case. The Lake Royale community in Franklin County needs a new police chief. The local board of directors fired interim chief Gabe Fenera yesterday. In a Facebook post, the police department says the board accused Fenera of insubordination. It also says the board is talking about dismantling the department. Breaking news, police in China say they have a person in custody after a stabbing attack on four instructors from an Iowa college at a park. In a post to social media, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds said that she's in touch with the U.S. State Department about what happened. The State Department says it's monitoring the situation. The instructors from Cornell College were in China visiting a partner university. The school says no students were part of that trip.
Celine Dion is opening up for the first time publicly since being diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder, stiff person syndrome. She first shared her diagnosis in an Instagram video back in December 2022. That's when she announced that she was postponing a number of tour dates. Stiff person syndrome, if you didn't know, is the stiffening of the muscles in the torso, the arms and the legs. Now, before her diagnosis, Celine says that she noticed that she was having difficulty controlling her voice and later noticed that her muscles were stiffening. In an NBC News exclusive interview with Hoda Kotb, she says that the weight of telling her story was too much to carry. I could not do this anymore. What do you want me to say? I have a uh, what? We did not know what was going on. I did not take the time. I should have stopped. She says there was a lot going on in her life and she felt like she had to hide her condition. As for whether she'll return to the stage, she says she's not sure. Her body will tell her if and when she's ready, according to her. Ahead of the one hour primetime special airing tonight at 10 p.m. on NBC this morning, today has a special preview. Well, this facility might, might look like a typical science lab to you, but it's actually North Carolina's first manufacturer of pharmaceutical-grade hemp products. From CBD gummies to pre-rolls, people use the products for a variety of conditions, from pain to anxiety, without mind-altering side effects. As WRL's Heidi Kirk reports, the Nash County Company aims to set a standard for manufacturing hemp products across the state. <laughs> It's the dream internship for Blake Smith. There's not a lot of stuff out there like this. Working alongside a team of professionals at Astera Labs. A lot of my other friends are doing, you know, your typical internships, you know, with different companies this summer, and this is different. They tell us it's the first facility manufacturing pharmaceutical grade hemp products in the state. The goal here is to do it in a way that's safe and consistent. We're in a state that doesn't have regulations in the CBD and hemp space, so we wanted to be that gold standard. State representative and president of the company, John Bell, took us behind the scenes. This is where the fun stuff starts happening. Showing us how products are made from start to finish. Right now, they're working out of this 10,000 square foot facility here in Nashville. But the hope is that in the next couple years that they'll double the size of this space and send out a lot more product. The facility has mostly worked with wholesalers and other businesses who put their own labels on the products. But the hope is by the end of this week, it will ship its first batch of its own products to stores in the state. New things are happening every day here. We're not only passionate about what we do, but, but we're growing this industry together. Not only is the facility shipping out thousands of products, but the team advocates for doing things right and becoming a leader in an emerging industry. It's all happening right here in Nashville, but they'll tell you the hope is to make an impact worldwide. Heidi Kirk, WRL News, Nash County. And if you've ever bought hemp-based products in the state, it's possible you've already tried a product manufactured at Estera Labs. Soon you'll find their brand, Southern Ease, on shelves across the state. Well, the Red Hat Amphitheater is moving to a new location. Today, Raleigh City leaders will talk about the next steps in that process. This is all part of a plan to expand the Raleigh Convention Center. It'll overtake the space where the amphitheater now sits. The Red Hat will be rebuilt one block south, and that construction is expected to start once the concert season wraps up in October. City Council will talk about the project during a work session that starts this afternoon at 4 o'clock. We're getting a look at how President Biden and Vice President Harris celebrated Juneteenth. A concert was held on the White House lawn last night to celebrate community, culture and music. Singers Gladys Knight and Patti LaBelle even stopped by to show up and perform. President Biden spoke about the importance of Juneteenth becoming a national holiday. But it wasn't just a symbolic gesture. It was a statement of fact. It was about a statement of faith. It was testimony of a testament to the resilience of generations of black Americans who kept their eyes set on the nation's North Star. This Juneteenth. Vice President Harris also spoke at this event, declaring a national day of action on Juneteenth to help people register to vote. Juneteenth became a federal holiday about three years ago. 
And in a few days, Wake Forest will hold a Juneteenth celebration. The two-day event is free and open to the public. It gets underway on Friday with a community gathering at Taylor Street Park. And there will be food, arts and crafts, and other activities. On Saturday, there will be a parade, a freedom historical walk, and a family-friendly event at the Dubois Center. We have all of the details on Wake Forest celebrations and others happening in our area on our website. Just head to WRL.com and search Juneteenth. Oh, boy. The Florida Panthers, two wins away from their first Stanley Cup. They beat the Edmonton Oilers last night in game two of their series 4-1. The Panthers now have a two-game-to-nothing lead in the Stanley Cup final. Now, game three will be Thursday night in Edmonton. A woman charged in connection with hitting a bicyclist and driving off is sharing her story. What she says happened moments before that accident. Plus, two men were injured in a shooting overnight in Raleigh. WREL is staying with this story as we work to learn what police are trying to determine in this case. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Time now is 26. I'm Michelle McConaughey. We're going to start with traffic. One person died after a crash on Creedmoor Road. Ken Smith is tracking this for us, Ken. Hey, Michelle, we've got a live picture of that crash scene right now. Uh, just, just about five minutes ago, uh, first responders pulled one of those uh, vehicles uh, that overturned into that, uh, into that ditch. They just pulled it out and loaded it onto the tow trucks that you see there. This involved two vehicles. Uh, involved two vehicles, one person in each car, one person in one of the vehicles died. Another person was transported to the hospital. Uh, we're working to get more information about the condition of that person who was taken to the hospital. But right now you can see uh, Creedmoor Road remains closed between Norwood Drive and Tickets Pond Drive. It will remain that way for quite some time until tow trucks can get out of here. But uh, it uh, pretty much will be shut down for quite some time. You might want to use US-1 or Capitol Boulevard as an alternate route. Elsewhere around the Triangle, things are beginning to thin out on the northern side of the Beltline, but you can still see the Bumper to bumper traffic on the south side of the belt line, Michelle. Amy, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. You got to go first this time. 69, the current temperature right now in Raleigh. Pretty nice outside this morning. The dew point 57, so the air nice and dry for the next few hours. We'll have temperatures warm into the 70s. We'll be in the upper 70s by 11 a.m. with mostly sunny skies. And then maybe you want to head to the pool this afternoon. It'll be a warm day. We don't expect rain. Partly cloudy and warm with a high temperature around 85. It's also uh, the day that a lot of folks will head out to the pool in the evening and the weather will stay nice for that as well. So pretty nice weather for today, and this will continue into tomorrow. Two men are in the hospital after a shooting in Raleigh. It happened on Charleston Park Drive just off Buffalo Road around midnight. We are working to learn the, their conditions and if there is a suspect. We'll have more news and weather on Fox 50. Now, breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. A deadly crash this morning in, uh, on Creedmoor Road in north of Raleigh. We'll tell you how to get around it and update you on that crash. And another round of some nice weather, low humidity and warm temperatures today will be in the 80s. I'll show you when the summer heat and humidity returns coming up. And the world's best golfers back practicing their swings as the second day of practice for the U.S. Open begins. A lot of people in Pinehurst, a lot of excitement there. Mm -hmm. We will take you there. Laura Levine has been there all morning for us. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. Oh, Chris, I'm going to kind of have my fingers crossed. I'm going to see her do a golf swing. Well, no, we'll <laughs> see if on, it ends Laura. up happening today. But I tell you what, not just golfing maybe the sport today. I tell you what, maybe even doing some kind of boating activity may be the thing. Amy Wilmoth is tracking what that looks like right now on a beautiful day out. If you have the opportunity to get on a boat on the water, it's a good day to do it. It'll be nice out. It's beautiful this morning. Live look at Lake Gaston from the Point Restaurant. We have sunshine over the lake this morning. It's 69 right now in Raleigh and Durham. We're now up to 70 in Fayetteville, 68 in Goldsboro, 66 in South Hill, Virginia. Overall, some really nice weather today. The humidity stays pretty low. It's going to be pretty normal as far as our temperatures are concerned. At lunchtime, we're at 81 with partly cloudy skies. Then we'll climb up to around 85 this afternoon 
for our highs. So if you're headed to the pool this afternoon, pretty good day to do it. You'll likely stay dry through the day and it's going to be on the warm side. And then this evening, it's swim meet Tuesday. There'll be some swim meets and the weather stays nice and quiet for that with temperatures staying in the 80s through about 7 o'clock this evening. So some nice weather in the forecast today. Tonight we'll get down to 61 and then another round of some pretty nice weather tomorrow. The humidity is going to creep up a little bit, but it's still not that bad. 87 for the high Wednesday. Thursday is the start to the U.S. Open down in Pinehurst and that's when the heat returns. That's when the humidity starts to return as well. 92 for the high temperature on Thursday. Then it'll be hotter for the end of the week. I'll have more on that and an update on the tropics coming up, Ken. 832, uh, Amy, we continue to follow the breaking news of uh, the, what have a deadly crash on Creedmoor Road north of, of Raleigh. Uh, that's where we find WRS Kelsey Coffey. She's been on the scene right now gathering information. Kelsey, set the scene for us and recap what happened. Unfortunately, we don't have her audio, but I can tell you if we can take that live picture, if we if we do have it back, uh, two vehicles collided and overturned on Creedmoor Road near Norwood Road uh, at uh, about five o'clock this morning. That road remains completely shut down at this hour. One of the drivers of the one of the vehicles died. Another driver was taken to the hospital uh, right now. Um, we're going to probably let you know that um, US one Capitol Boulevard is an alternate north south route. Uh, if you want to get around that closure on Creedmoor Road. Also around the triangle, we're seeing the cap on uh, the Beltline this morning. Just the usual uh, brake tapping and bumper to bumper traffic on the south side of the Beltline. Things are beginning to thin out just a bit on the north side of the Beltline, as well as uh, in Durham 885 and uh, the Durham Freeway. Just some brake tapping going on at this hour. Ken. And more breaking news this morning in Raleigh. Two men are injured after a shooting on Charleston Park Drive. That's near Buffalo Road and South Hall Road. Video from the breaking news tracker shows police investigating at homes in the neighborhood there. Police say the two men were taken to the hospital. It is not clear how serious their injuries are. We're working to find out if a suspect has been arrested. The world's best golfers are back on the course at Pinehurst number two this morning. It is the second day of practice ahead of the U.S. Open, which starts Thursday. W. Oreo's Laura Levine is at the course this morning, and Laura, golf fans are getting a chance to get up close and personal, seeing some golfers there and having a good time. Yeah, Chris, you definitely won't see me with any golf clubs in hand. I think I do better here on the sidelines watching, but fans are going to be able to see up close, up close and personal the professionals that we're looking at right now with their practice rounds underway. You can even see some people here standing on the sideline watching, and this is what it's really all about for them, being to be a part of this experience. Now, we did see here at the first hole, Tiger Woods, about an hour ago, he teed off here with his son, Charlie, right next to him, helping him uh, along side him. We saw some other golfers as well. Uh, Max Hoa earlier as well. But yesterday fans also came from across the country to see Woods practice. The 15 time major champion hasn't won a major event since his triumph at the 2019 Masters. He's played a more limited schedule since suffering a career threatening leg injury in a car crash in 2021. We also saw Raleigh native Webb Simpson yesterday get some practice rounds in. He ranked 220th in the world and had a difficult path to reach the Open. He had to qualify just last week at Duke University Golf Club to get here. I spoke with some local fans who were really excited and thrilled to be a part of this experience. Working at golf course probably about five minutes from here. I mean, we had an influx of golfers. Just really nice to see everyone here. And then, of course, as soon as I found out it was here, uh, how to get hooked up some tickets. So. <laughs> I love it. I remember, like you said, when they announced that it was coming back here, we all freaked out because, yeah. like, we just got back from our freshman year of college and coming home to this is crazy. Yeah, so a lot of excitement here. We are expected to hear from Tiger Woods today in a press conference, which begins at 10 a.m. We're also expected to see some other big names out here on the golf course today, such as Scotty Scheffler, as well as Rory Mc. McElroy, excuse me, and Xander Shoffley. So a lot of big things happening here at Pinehurst today. Laura Levine, WRL News, live at Pinehurst. And uh, just a little reminder, WRL is your home for the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. Our team will have complete coverage leading up to and during the tournament on your phone, your tablet, and TV. The first round tees off Thursday.
Breaking news in Durham, a woman is hurt after a shooting on Fayetteville Street. It happened near East Umstead Street about 1.30 this morning. Police say they found a woman who had been shot in an empty lot. She is expected to be okay. We are working to find out if officers have made any arrests. Now, just blocks from where that shooting happened, a three-year-old was seriously injured after a drive-by shooting yesterday. This happened at a Walgreens on Fayetteville Street just before 5 o'clock last night. Now, police say someone drove through the parking lot and shot into a vehicle, and that's where a man was sitting along with the three-year-old boy. Both of them were shot. The man is expected to be okay, but the boy was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. At last check, police have not made any arrests. Today, House lawmakers are expected to vote on a bill that would make it illegal to wear a mask in public except for health reasons. It's happening today at the Legislative Building in Raleigh, where you're looking live this morning. State lawmakers came to a compromise on the legislation last week. Wearing a medical or surgical grade mask to prevent the spread of disease is OK. Masking for protests is not. The Senate passed the bill last week. The House is expected to pass it today. And the bill also includes a proposal that could affect this year's elections. Republican lawmakers have tacked a loosening of campaign finance laws for corporations to the bill. Corporations are currently allowed to fund independent groups that can make ads supporting candidates. But corporations are not allowed to directly fund politicians. Critics say this new bill would allow that. This morning, groups that oppose the measure are scheduled to gather outside the state house. Durham police are working to arrest whoever is responsible for a shooting at Soho Apartments on Chalk Level Road. Several evidence markers were seen on the ground in the sidewalk and staircase as well. An officer told WREL one person was shot and is recovering from minor injuries. <laughs> This morning, it's still not clear if Israel and Hamas will agree to go forward with a ceasefire deal passed by the United Nations Security Council. The deal drafted by the United States to stop the war in Gaza was approved on Monday. The proposal calls for a, quote, permanent end to hostilities between Israel and Hamas. The plan also calls for the return of any dead hostages remains and the exchange of Palestinian prisoners. It comes after almost a week of negotiations among members of the council. And we're also seeing more video from the hostage rescues in Gaza over the weekend. Israeli authorities released video yesterday showing the moment that three hostages were found. The three men found were all abducted during the October 7th attack at a music festival that ignited the war. The jury in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial will continue its deliberations today. The trial went to the jury's hands yesterday after a week of testimony. Hunter Biden's family, including his wife and his stepmother, First Lady Jill Biden, were in the courtroom to show their support for him. He's charged with felonies stemming from the purchase of a handgun, while prosecutors say he was using drugs, including crack cocaine. He faces the possibility of up to 25 years in prison. This is something we are getting used to seeing now. The NC State Bell Tower all lit up in red. We saw it all during the men's and women's basketball tournaments. And now it was lit red last night after the Wolfpack baseball teams beat Georgia to advance to the College World Series. This is a look at the final out. Oh, it's so exciting. And then a big celebration. This is the fourth time in program history that NC State is headed to Omaha and they didn't get a play. They didn't get to play in the World Series the last time they qualified in 2021 because of COVID. The Wolfpack will play Kentucky on Saturday. UNC also in the World Series. They'll play Virginia on Friday. Today, the Boys and Girls Club of Wake County will celebrate the opening of a new location in Garner. There will be a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Parish Manor Club at 430. It's the county's eighth location, but Garner's first. 125 members have already signed up. What is in a name? Well, possibly a lot for elephants. The new research that reveals how African elephants communicate with each other, even with their own names. Plus, Tom Brady's pants have a new owner. How much the pants he wore in his final NFL game went for at auction. Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Amy Wilmoth in for Elizabeth this morning. This is a look at our weather watcher photo sent in from Matthew. This is at Chatham Mills Pollinator Garden in Pittsburgh. Beautiful flowers there uh, and gorgeous weather for the next couple of days. So get outside if you can. This is a live look at North Hills of the beautiful blue sky over the shopping center there. It's very nice and comfortable with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. 70 in Smithfield with sunshine at 70 in Fayetteville as well. 64 in Roxborough, 68 in Southern 
alpines. Hour by hour today, if you want to do your exercise outside, it's another good day to do that. With the low humidity, it should be pretty nice. We'll be in the low 80s at lunchtime. If you plan to get some steps in on your lunch break, it will be pretty comfortable. And then we'll have a high around 85. Later on this evening, we'll get back down into the upper 70s around 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock this evening. The dry air is with us again today, but then as we head into tomorrow, the humidity starts to slowly creep in. So it'll start to feel a little bit more muggy tomorrow. I still don't think it's going to be bad. Dew points will be in the low 60s for tomorrow. We should be in the 50s for today, but it is going to be a little bit worse tomorrow. By the time we get to Thursday, Friday and Saturday, the dew points go into the mid to upper 60s and it will start to really heat up as well. We'll have some pretty hot temperatures. Maybe Friday is going to be the hottest day so far this year. Today and tomorrow, not bad with temperatures near normal, but then Thursday, we're in the low 90s for highs. Same thing with the heat index. The heat index for Friday now looks like it could top out in the triple digits, so it is going to be very hot Friday. Saturday, hot with the heat index in the mid 90s, and Sunday, still hot with high temperatures in the low 80s. So it's going to be hot for the next several days. Once we get to Thursday, it's going to be hot, and it'll continue through the weekend. We do have a frontal system that will likely stall off the coast, and we could see a low pressure system develop, and it could become tropical in nature, although the probabilities are lower today compared to yesterday. It's about a 20 to 30 percent chance that we could see a tropical depression form off the coast over the weekend. So the odds aren't very high. They're actually higher down to the south across uh, the Bay of Campeche, southern Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific as well. But we'll keep monitoring the tropics, let you know if anything changes. Pretty quiet today and tomorrow, and then Pinehurst, the U.S. Open, gets started Thursday, and that's when the heat is here, and it sticks around through the weekend and into early next week, Ken. All right, Amy, we've got an update on that story we've been following all morning long on Creedmoor Road. Right now, we've just been told that uh, from our crew on the scene that the tow trucks were able to take those vehicles out, and Creedmoor Road is about to reopen, even though on the census right now it's still showing up that it's closed right there on Norwood Road uh, at, at uh, Tickets Pond Drive as well. Uh, this involved two vehicles this morning that overturned. One driver died in that crash. The other driver was transported to the hospital. But again, we're just getting reports that Creedmoor Road uh, will reopen in the next few minutes or so. Uh, we'll keep monitoring for you and have an update uh, at the 9 o'clock hour on Fox 15. Elsewhere around the triangle, we're seeing just a couple of crashes uh, on uh, the uh, I-40 westbound right there. This uh, near the Wade Avenue split. We're seeing some brake tapping and some bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic as a result of that crash. Crash. We'll keep an eye on it for you and see, let you know what's going on. Usually this, this time of morning, we've seen things clear up on the belt line, but you've seen the northern side of the belt line and the south side of the belt line. Still a lot of brake tapping going on. A suspected hit and run driver is set to appear in court today, and she told me her side of the story after turning herself in. Chapel Hill police say that a driver hit a bicyclist on Franklin Street last Thursday. 26 year old Brianna Beasley saw herself on the news, she told me. That's when she says she surrendered to police yesterday morning. Beasley says that she saw caution cones on the street and thought she was going around those. That's when this happened. When I heard a thump, I did stop, but I did not get out. All I did was look in my, my rear view mirrors and I didn't see anything. So that's why I kept going. I didn't know that I physically hit anybody until midnight the next morning. Mm. And, and when, it, when it had hit the news. Beasley says that she'll await getting a public defender to decide if she'll plead guilty. A police officer in Roanoke Rapids shot a dog after police say the animal aggressively charged at officers. The dog's owner is now facing charges after police say that he threatened to kill the officers in retaliation. Officers responded to Cedar Street Sunday night for a medical emergency. When they got there, they say a large dog ran out of the home in what they call an attacking manner. One of the officers shot the dog in the head. The dog survived. Police say the dog's owner was intoxicated as he came out of the home and threatened officers. Police later learned they were at the wrong house. The dog's owner refused to surrender the dog for examination. He has been ordered to take it to a, a vet. Violent crime continues to fall in the United States. This is coming from the FBI. It says that the violent crime is actually down more than 15% during the first three months of the year compared to this time last year. The number of murders dropped by more than 25% and sexual assaults were down 25%. Some of the country's biggest cities, including Seattle, Boston, Philadelphia, already have seen a 40% drop in murders this year. And experts believe that trend will continue and the murder rate could have the biggest year-to-year -year drop ever. 
A Texas zoo is working to stop animal trafficking. The Gladys Porter Zoo has been taking care of several monkeys that were smuggled across the border from Mexico. 18 spider monkeys and one howler monkey have been sent to the zoo by federal officials. All are endangered species. They were found in backpacks or cars at the border in poor health. The zoo has reached out to other zoos to see if they can help care for some of these baby monkeys. New research shows African elephants call each other and respond to individual names, something that only a few wild animals do. Researchers analyzed recordings of hundreds of elephant calls and they found the sound of the calls varied depending on which elephant the call was for. Researchers also discovered that female elephants may actually use names more often with their calves, either to comfort the calf or to help it learn its name. Researchers believe that elephants are coming up with names to identify each other. Jeff Hogan in the WRL Live Center. I want to update you on the plane crash in Malawi that happened, and they were searching for that plane. It has been found, and all 10 people on board have been killed. Now, one of the persons on board you see in this picture right now getting off of a plane previously, Malawi's vice president, Salos Chalima, as well as nine other people died when that small military plane they were in crashed. There was bad weather. It was in a mountainous region. Chalima was 51 years old, and the president of the country went on live TV saying that the wreckage of the plane had been located after a search of more than a day. There were thick forests, hilly terrain there. Everybody on board was killed on impact, he said, and he said, quote, I am deeply saddened and sorry to inform you all that it has turned out to be a terrible tragedy. Oh, that is just so sad. Thanks, Jeff. Group chats that include both Apple and Android users are about to get easier. The next update to the iPhone's operating system will include updates to messages with Android users. Finally, right? That will allow them to share higher quality photos, videos, and audio files. Messages from Android users will still come through as those little green bubbles. So no more super compressed <laughs> files. Whoa. Yes. Well, that's a treat for everybody. Yeah. All right, it's a big week in Pinehurst as the 124th U.S. Open tournament is just two days away. The 2024 World Golf Hall of Fame induction was held last night. Inductees include Padraig Harrington, Tom Weisskopf, Johnny Farrell, Sandra Palmer, Beverly Hansen, and 13 LPGA founders. It was found at the it was held rather at the Carolina Hotel, which is part of the Pinehurst Resort and Country Club, and it marked the hall's 50th anniversary. Tonight, the Tar Heel Traveler will give us a look at the fascinating history of Pinehurst, and that airs tonight on WREL at 555. A pair of Tom Brady's football pants have a new home. According to reports, the pair of pants Tom Brady wore in his final NFL game were sold at auction for over $89,000. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers lost to the Dallas Cowboys in the 2022 playoffs. It's still a far cry from the jersey that he wore, which sold for $1.3 million. The only game pants to sell for more were worn by Babe Ruth in 1921. Those sold for $183,000. A lot of money to throw on pants. <laughs> new historical treasures are on display at the Library of Congress. A new exhibit called Collecting Memories features 15th century illustrated Hebrew religious texts and contents of President Abraham Lincoln's pockets on the night he was assassinated. Other items include the first sketches of Spider-Man and videos of rock icon Carlos Santana in concert. The exhibit opens this Thursday. Disney World has a new attraction for its first black princess. Tiana's Bayou Adventure, inspired by Disney's Princess and the Frog, That'll open later this month. The new ride replaces Splash Mountain. That was based on the 1946 Disney film Song of the South. The film has long been criticized for its stereotypical portrayals of African Americans. Riders will still get to ride through on a log, but they'll get a look at, in, at Tiana's home and also into her kitchen. The new ride will also be at Disneyland, but there's no word on when it will open. Well, after more than two years of waiting, a fan favorite show coming back. Apple TV released the first look at the second season of Severance with a promotional photo to Instagram. It also shared just a few seconds of the footage from the show in a teaser trailer. First season ended in April of 2022. No word yet on a release date for season two.